Guys, if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. This is my face. And from now on, you guys are going to start seeing my face. So nice to meet you. I'm Gio. If you don't like it, put a textbook over the bottom left of the screen or textbook. What year are we in? Or whatever. Cover it up. Whatever the case may be. But hi, I'm Gio. Today, we're talking about who the market makers are and why it's important. Okay. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, specifically regarding my vector candles, which is a huge part of the way that I trade on this channel, you know that market makers are very important and it's very important to be aware of them and who they are and know how your money gets moved. So that's what we're talking about today. Now, you're going to say, Gio, what are these three rectangles on the screen? Well, I'm glad you asked, okay? This little blue teal rectangle, by the way, guys, I'm sorry that my mouse does this thing. I don't know what that is. I need to really look into that. Anyways, this little blue teal rectangle is you, okay? Little puny little fish in a big, big ocean. This yellow rectangle is your exchange or your X. That's why I drew it that way. We'll remind, we'll think of them as your X. Now this could be any X. This could be Binance. This could be Bybit. This could be MEXC. Doesn't matter who it is. Could be any exchange, right? And this big daddy rectangle is the market maker. Now, what is this? How does this work? Well, when you place an order of $100 worth of Bitcoin, for example, you're longing, right? You're purchasing Bitcoin. What do you do? You take your money, you put it into the exchange, you ping the exchange and you let the exchange know that you want to place your order, right? And your exchange will place the order against you and fill your position, right? So if you're longing with $100 worth of Bitcoin, for example, you receive if this clicks, ah, there we go. You receive $100 worth of Bitcoin, right? Simple enough, easy to go, right? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that because we have, as I mentioned, our big daddy market maker or Steve, as we like to call it on the channel. By the way, this entire concept was taught to me by Tino from Traders Reality. So big shouts out to Tino's from Traders Reality. I did not come up with this. I did not invent this. This is what I've learned from him, and this is just my rewording of it. Anyways, let's carry on with how it gets a little bit more complicated than that. Now, your exchange or your X does not have the funds to fill your $100 position. Well, that's true and false because they do have the funds to fill your $100, but they don't have the funds to fill your $100 plus Jim's $10 million or CryptoFace's $10 million position or Becky's $50 million position etc right they don't have the funds for that they're they're that's too much it's too much money to be able to fund especially when it comes to leverage to be able to fund it that is where our market makers come in okay your market makers the name is in the title like the answer is in the question they make the market without the market maker there's no liquidity they provide the liquidity for you to open and close your positions right now we know that the market makers move the market right they can manipulate the price and it's their job to make sure that, that you think you can win, which and at the end of the day, the business model is for them to win, not for you to win. But nonetheless, they supply the liquidity to the exchange to open or close against your position. So the exchange, in a sense, is just the middleman. So what happens when you actually go to order $100 worth of Bitcoin to your exchange, your exchange will then ping that order to the market maker who then fills the order against you and pings it back to the exchange. Now, what do I mean by filling the order against you? Well, guys, if you've heard the term, in order for you to buy, somebody needs to sell, and in order for you to sell, somebody needs to buy, this is exactly what I'm referring to. But who is somebody? Somebody is the market maker. So if you are longing $100 worth of Bitcoin, right? if you're longing, you tell the exchange you want to long, the exchange then tells the market maker that you want to long, which is buying. And then the market maker will short or sell against you and send the order back to you on your exchange. And you can see your current PL. Now, if there's something we know about longing and shorting is that obviously one, you're betting it goes up and one, you're betting it goes down. But what really happens when you're longing, you're borrowing money to fill a larger position size, right? So even though your margin could be $100, you could be 10X long and have $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, 
right? So you're borrowing money. You are selling, however, you are not borrowing money. You are essentially borrowing Bitcoin or whatever your asset is, and you are selling it. You're selling Bitcoin that you do not have in hopes to buy it back cheaper than you bought it for, right? And that is where your P&L, that is where your difference is. That's where your profit or your loss can come from. So that being said, we know that when you long, when you're longing, you're giving the exchange your $100, who then gives it to the market maker, who is giving you the Bitcoin that you are now holding in your position. So what does this mean in a sense? We know that when somebody buys, somebody has to, has to sell, right? When you are up, let's just say 50% on your position, and you are plus $50, the market maker is now minus $50. This is important, especially important when it comes to vector candles. Guys, I have a complete tutorial on this. I'll put it in the top right right now. You'll get a little tag bubble. Click on that if you don't know about the market makers, but or, or sorry, if you don't know about the vector candles, but click that. This is important because the way that human psychology works is really when you're up 50%, humans or retail don't typically close their positions. Market makers do not lose in the long run. They have what seems to be infinite pockets. They don't actually have infinite money, despite what you may believe, but their pockets are very, 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 very deep, and they have the power to manipulate the market and move price to wherever they want. So when you're up $50, the market maker is down $50. That is how you can even get that $50 should you decide to close the position. You are not taking that money from the exchange. That money is coming from the market maker. If we reverse it, if you're down $50, for example, well now the market maker is up $50. And when you get liquidated or it hits your stop loss, aka it is forcing you to close the position because you've run out of margin, then who profits from that? The market maker and your exchange, of course, will take whatever fees they need to, etc. This is a misconception on what the majority of traders believe. The majority of traders believe that if somebody wins, somebody else has to lose. And that, that is correct. But who is the somebody else? It is the market maker. It is not me against you. If I go $100 long and you go $100 short, whoever the difference is between us will make the profit and whoever it is will make the loss. No, that's not how it works. It is us against the market maker. So essentially we're on the same team. And this is where you can start to follow smart money concepts, right? SMC trading to trade alongside the market makers so that you can be on the right side of the position, which is obviously something that I teach. Now, who exactly are the market makers? To be honest, there's a lot of uh, theories behind who the market makers are. And in my opinion, it doesn't really matter who the market makers are. I like to think of them as the dealer in deal or no deal. You know that the market makers are there and you know that they're present and we can see when they're present in the chart based on the vector candles, but we don't actually know who they are, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the, the way that they work and the way that they move is the same whether it's one individual or a group of individuals, it's all the same, so it doesn't matter. This is like how I like to think of the market makers, the dealer in no deal or no deal, all right? Who do I believe that they are? I believe that they look something like this. I believe that this is what you're up against. So the market makers are not one person or five people. It is an entire institution of big computers and many operators operating these big computers and it's a bunch of algorithms, right? They know where your stop losses are. They know where your liquidations are. And that's why sometimes you feel like they went and attacked your exact stop loss and liquidation because you think like retail. You put your stop losses, for example, right under the swing low. What happens? It comes, taps your stop loss and bounces away. And you think that they're going for you specifically. No. But this is what I believe that you're up against. So this is why it's important to know who the market makers are, especially when you tie it into vector candles. As I mentioned, make sure you click on that link. Um, I'll put it in the, uh, down in the description below as well. But I have an entire tutorial on it. And this is why it's very important to you for you to know who you're up against and what you're up against. Now, another thing to know, obviously we know that there are different sessions, right? There's the London session, there's the New York session, there's the Asian session and so forth. Different sessions move 
differently. They have their own personality, let's say. Different market makers have their own personality. Are the market makers just one institution in, on the planet and operate 24 hours a day? No. There are many different market makers and there are many different institutions. And what happens is when London closes, for example, the London market makers will communicate to the New York market makers on what their intention is. Are they looking to spike price only to drop it? Are they looking to drop price only to pump it into a, the sky, to the moon, as they say, right? They illustrate their intention so that the market makers can remain consistent and on the same team across the globe. Nobody works 24 hours a day. That is why the sessions are relatively important to know because while you're sitting over leveraged on a position, stressing your mind out and you can't take your eyes off the chart, depending on the time of day, your market makers or the algorithms that are working to move the market are not even doing anything, they're chilling. So while you're here stressing, can't take your eye off the chart, they're at home with their wives on vacation or eating or whatever the case is, right? So it's very important to know when New York closes, they communicate to Asia, right? There's a three hour gap between the New York session close and the Asian session opening. Well, what happens in that time? Is it just random? No. They are communicating with Asia so that Asia can be kept in the loop on how to move the market, on how to proceed forward, okay? So guys, that's who the market makers are. You're up against an army, essentially, with basically infinite money. Not literally, but pretty much infinite money. So it's important to know that. And when you tie this logic in with our vector candles, this can be a very powerful, um, very powerful knowledge to have. And, um, you know, this can really help you get the edge. Guys, if you like the content, please make sure you like and you subscribe. If you're not in the Discord, the description is down below. Make sure you join the Discord. The VIP code for the Discord, Discord um, will be 1977. Okay, so make sure you join the VIP Discord. Um, I frequently give updates. I let you guys know what I'm thinking in the market. I don't give you signals. However, uh, I give you pretty good analysis. And if you don't believe me, Take others' word for it. Join the Discord and ask them and, and they'll be able to tell you. And I also want to say very quickly, um, I got some new news, some pretty exciting news. I am adding to the list of affiliate links now, Mexi. Mexi is the exchange that I'm currently using. I've been using it um, for a while since Bybit is no longer available in my country. If you're in Canada, specifically Toronto, shout out to you. So I'm a new affiliate now with Mexi. They reached out to me and they wanted me to be a partner with them and I'm very happy to do so. So if you don't have an exchange already, Mexi is the cheapest fees that you can get in terms of scalping and swing trading. It's very, very cheap. Make sure you sign up with the description or with the link down in the description below. And uh, if you guys want a tutorial on how to use Mexi, if you're super, super new, let me know in the comments down below. But that's all I got for you guys today. Happy trading.